Let's go ahead and learn how to use the derivative to find the derivative at a certain point. Uh, remember the derivative is just a gradient of a tangent line. So if we use this example of y equals x squared, so this is the graph like this, what if I want to know the derivative or the gradient of the tangent at x equals 1? So let's just say I want to know that. So that means that x equals 1 here. Uh, I know that y equals 1, so something like this, like this. I'm trying to find out what's the gradient here. That's going to be the goal, okay? So we've already learned all the steps we need. We just got to put it together. So it's something like this. Let's just say, so this is something like this. So here I'm trying to find out what's the gradient here. Well, remember what I was teaching you before. Uh, the gradient is just, it's just a slope, right? It's just a, it's just a change in y over change in x. And as you walk to the right, it tells you how steep the hill is. So if I'm walking to the right, do you notice here I'm going down a hill as I go to the right? Here the hill is less steep. Oh, now it's flat. Now it's a little bit steeper going upwards. Now it's more and more and more steep going upwards. So I'm expecting some positive value here. Shouldn't be zero. It shouldn't be negative. Right? Here would be negative. Here would be zero because it's flat. But right here should be some positive number. So how can I do this without using two different points? Well, I can use this trick we found before. Right? The idea will be, how do I do this at x equals 1? Well, it turns out super, super easy, as long as you know how to find the derivative at any point. So this is going to be the, the whole idea here, is how do we do this? Well, first we find the derivative at any point. So let's do that in this example. Here. So this particular one here, uh, well, let's find out f primed of x. In other words, what is the derivative at any point? Well, f of x is x squared. Remember our rule for exponents for derivatives. I take my exponent, I put it down to the front, so that means it becomes 2 times x. My exponent becomes 1 less, so 2 minus 1 is just 1. Anything to the 1, we just ignore it. This is it. I've got my derivative of any point. Now I find the derivative at that specific point. So watch how easy this is. If I wanted at x equals 1, I'd say f primed at 1. Well, it's going to be 2 times 1 which is just 2. So do you see how easy that was? That tells me the gradient is 2 here. Isn't that crazy easy? So and again, just the key is find the derivative anywhere and then do this. But the reason why this is so powerful is because once you find the derivative anywhere, well, you can plug it into any value. Watch, if I make x equals a minus 5, let's see, well, at minus 5, I don't know, it's somewhere up here. Look, it's kind of steeper, isn't it? But this is so easy, look, at x equals minus 5, just put in 2 times minus 5, which is minus 10. Oh, that tells me how steep this is. Watch, shouldn't it be 0 right here? What if I put in x equals 0 here? 0 times 2 is 0, right? That's why it's that. Isn't that kind of powerful? So this is why I like doing it this way right here. I like doing that because, you know, you can separately, you can actually find, uh, you know, more examples, right? So just to show you, like, so f primed at minus 5, for example, is just minus 10. f primed at 0, maybe I'll just write them down, right? That was just 0. f primed at, I don't know, 100. At x equals 100. Shouldn't it be some crazy steep number? Well, what's 100 times 2? Uh, it's 200. So yeah, it is a steep number. Look, it goes over one unit, you go up 200. Isn't that kind of powerful? So find the gradient anywhere, then just plug in your point you need. So I put this hit the slopes, right? Because it's People call it a slope. So let's go ahead and just do some more here. So we've got a function here, f of x equals x squared minus 4 over x plus 3. Ooh, that looks hard, doesn't it? But we can find the derivative. And then we want the derivative at x equals 2. We're going to try to do this without using a calculator first, but I'm going to show you next how to use a calculator. First, I would say is rewrite. I think we should probably rewrite this equation because we've got an x on the bottom. I read another video, I showed you how to do that, right? So we're going to work with this. So I'll rewrite f of x first. We're going to make it more calculus friendly. So first, we're just doing the original function still. Uh, well, x squared is no problem, we still leave it. It's this one here that was a problem. Minus 4 is on the top. There we go. But x, I can rewrite it on the top, just make it a negative exponent. It's x to the 1 right now, so I make it x to the minus 1. And of course, plus 3. Well, then I can do f primed of x now, can't I? This is pretty easy. Now I can just uh, find the derivative. So f primed of x, let's see, we use our rules for derivatives. The 2 comes in front, so it's 2 times x. Exponent becomes 1 less than it was, so 2 minus 1 is just a 1, so there it is. I mean, I can leave it, I guess. Now what happens here? It looks complicated, but use the same rule. Minus 1 times minus 4 is plus 4. Then I have x to the power of, well, what's minus 1 minus 1? Well, that's minus 2. 
And remember, the derivative of a constant just disappears, just becomes 0. Now I can fix this up if I want to, I guess. I can say that f prime of x, just to pretty it up a little bit so it's easier to use, 2 times x to the 1 is just 2x. And let's see, I have plus 4 here. That's its own number. It's sitting on the top. It's the x to the minus 2. That's telling me there's an x on the bottom, and it's to the power of 2. So this is the more simplified version here. So this is actually the answer to part A. This is the derivative at any point. So if I want to know whatever this function looks like, I don't even know what it looks like. But whatever it looks like, I know that the gradient of it at any point is this. And why is that powerful? Well, now I can just plug in x equals 2. Do you notice? All I need to do now is just plug in x equals 2. By the way, on a test, if I did this one wrong, as long as I use my wrong answer correctly here, I'm still OK. So watch, I'm going to do f primed of 2 now. Well, it's going to be 2 times 2 plus 4 over 2 squared. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 4 over, let's see, four, uh, 2 squared is 4. 4 over 4 is 1, isn't it? So it's going to be 4 plus 1. Therefore, f primed at 2 is just going to be 4 plus 1, which is 5. Do you see how powerful this was? This tells me the gradient of this crazy graph, which I don't even care what it looks like. I know that the gradient at x equals 2, I know it's going upwards, right, because it's a gradient of 5. Isn't that kind of great? So that's how we do things by hand at a point, right? because the derivative is the gradient of the tangent line. Now let's look at how to do this with a calculator. So in case you want to use that, there's a bunch of ways of doing it. I'm going to show you three things to do. So derivative at a point. If you want to do it by graphing, because you can, you could use, uh, I mean, I've got the instructions here for the TI Inspire, the 84, but I know the Casio and the other ones, they all do it as well. I'm just trying to show you. Here's some tricks for you. So let's see how to do this one. Step one is to graph the function. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, so I'm going to show you by graphing. I like this way because I can see what happens. I'll show you with the Inspire, but it also works for 84. And as the other ones as well. I'm just trying to show you, in general, you want to graph it, then find the derivative. So at least that works for all the calculators. Now, the idea, the, the specifics of it, what you actually type in, that changes depending on your calculator, right? Depending on what you use. So we're going to first graph it, then we're going to find the derivative at the point. Let's do it. So let me show you maybe with that uh, example we just had. So let me just show you with um, this example right here. Maybe we'll do it with that one. So let's try to graph this function here. So first of all, I'm going to get on my calculator, add a new graph. I'm just going to go ahead and graph it. So you gotta, you got to see it first. So x squared minus, uh, I'm going to make a pretty fraction here, 4 over x. And I'm going to keep going and say plus 3. So it looks like that. Ooh. Now what do I want to do now? I've just graphed it. Right? Now what do I want? Now i got to find the derivative at a point. So in this case right here, I'll do menu and analyze. So watch this. So I go over right here, I press menu, I press analyze, and I say give me dy dx. Look, it's right there. Now I don't want to actually uh, click anywhere. I just want to type in the point that I want. I wanted point at x equals 1, didn't I? Wasn't that where I wanted it? Let's see. Was that at x equals 1? What was the question before? No, it was at x equals 2. Sorry, so i got to put in x equals 2. So I'll go back here. I'll do uh, undo here, and I'll do it. All right, so derivative at x equals, and I here I just type in the number 2. I press Enter. Notice it gives me, this isn't the y value. Do you see this little 5 here? That tells me the gradient is 5. Didn't I find that before? Didn't I find the gradient was 5? So that was pretty easy. That was doing it by graphing. Do so you first graph it, then find the derivative. You could, however, do it directly on your calculator. If you're too lazy to even graph it, I guess you could. I like graphing it, though, because I can see if there's other weird things going on. But you could. You could just go calculate a new calculator and do menu and do calculus derivative. Let me show you that one. So I'll do the same example as before. And by the way, in the TI-84, uh, um, it's n deriv. So let me just show you this one here. So I'll do the same idea here. Same question, except I'm going to try to solve it now as if I didn't want to do it this way. I'm going to do it as if I just wanted to use a calculator page here. So add a new calculator. I go to Menu, and I press in Calculus. And I say I want the numerical derivative at a point. Now, what variable do I have? I've got x's. What value do I want? I want x equals 2. I want the first derivative. All right, d by dx, although it looks complicated, just put in your equation. So I got x squared minus, pretty fraction here, 4 over x, all that, plus 3. And then I press Enter. Do you notice it gives me 5? 
So I've got the answer there too. So do you see how I was able to solve this one that way? That was pretty nice. Now, um, there's another fancy thing you can do. I'm not sure if the TI-84 can do it. I know the Inspire can do it. This is kind of this is kind of neat. So you could actually graph the function first. By the way, this is maybe how it feels trying to understand math. I like this one. <laughs> Can't get this. He's like, oh. So here we go. We're going to look at this way of doing it as well. This is a bit crazy, but uh, it's really, really powerful. I can't believe this calculator does it. So this right here is my original function, f of x. All right, so I've graphed the original function. Okay. And actually, I didn't really care about the derivative so much. Um, what I want to do now is actually graph what the derivative looks like. It's a bit abstract, though, but just so you know. So I'm first going to press tab to open up a new equation. All right, I want to get a new equation. I want to open up this math template. So I'm going to press this button. I'll show you it right here. The math template button is, I should probably show you here on this one, this button right here. That's the one you want. And from there, you're going to choose this button right here. So let me show you that. That's the math template and then the button. So I'm going to, instead of saying f of x equals and putting in the equation, watch, I'm going to press this little template thing and I'm going to say, give me the derivative. So I'm going to say d by dx of, and what's really cool here is here, you can actually select which variable you want. So I'm actually going to choose a derivative, put it in, and I'm actually going to put in which variable I need. So watch carefully. I press a variable, and I'm going to choose f1, and I'm going to choose of x. What this does is it's going to tell me, give me the derivative of f1 of x, which is what I originally graphed. It's going to show me what the graph of the derivative looks like. And what's kind of amazing then is the y value of this red crazy graph here, the y value of that red graph is the derivative of the blue graph. So watch the blue graph at x equals 2 has some y value of, I don't know, whatever, but uh, it turns out the y value of the red graph here, that tells me the gradient which is kind of powerful because you can then see what the derivative looks like. If you're doing more advanced math, this is super powerful to see like what's really going on, although it looks kind of like a mess right now. But uh, I promise you, if you're doing really advanced math, being able to graph the derivative is super important. So anyway, so that's uh, something that we were able to do, right? So we were able to graph these. Now, you might be wondering why in the world should you care about derivatives? This whole topic is so important, okay? But just so you know about derivatives, economics, we have all sorts of things. I mean. Honestly, calculus is so important. We use it in so many different things. My wife was uh, taking econ classes. They had to learn about marginal costs. I remember that. So there's a derivative. Biology, a rate of cell growth. A rate? Oh, that's a derivative. Chemistry, reaction rates. There's tons of derivatives in chemistry. Physics, that's my field. So of course, I know more about that one. But just to give some simpler examples, got displacement, velocity, acceleration. We call those kinematics. They're all derivatives. Because velocity, it turns out, watch this, S of T, if that's the position, that's what we call the position. Uh, let's say I just have something. Well, the velocity is just the derivative of the position. And we have the acceleration is just a derivative of the velocity. So like tons of stuff in physics. We have momentum. We have things uh, where we have changes in momentum over time. That's called an impulse. If you want to get to space, well, you have to kick out stuff uh, behind your rocket. That means you're losing mass. So you can do dmdt, like how much the mass changes. And that'll tell you something about the acceleration, because acceleration depends on your mass. So calculus is so many places in the natural sciences, especially. Also in econ, there's lots of other examples. This is just a few of them, okay? But just saying a derivative at a point doesn't have to be so bad. Find the derivative at any point, then just plug in your point you need. Boom.